Now at five and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, someone hit the jackpot in the $800 million Mega Millions. We'll tell you where that winning ticket was sold. Plus, Hurricane Francine is gaining strength as it nears the coast of Louisiana. And the Crossroads honors the events of 9-11. We'll take you to the ceremony. Hurricane Francine is now at a Category 2 and it is moving ashore onto Louisiana even as we speak. The eye wall just made landfall. Morgan City, Louisiana, then uh, New Orleans are going to be under the gun for all of the tonight through tomorrow morning. We'll have the latest for you on Francine and also on what to expect here in the crossroads for the next few days. Plus, a controversial discussion surrounds proposed religious infused curriculum for Texas public schools. You're watching 25 News Now at 5. Good afternoon and thanks for being with us. I'm Shauna Curry. Well, the Crossroads pauses to honor the lives lost in the 9-11 terror attacks 23 years ago today. First responders and community leaders gathered at De Leon Plaza this morning. The Victoria Fire Department organized this event, which was also attended by several first responders from communities, um, including Round Rock and Holotus, who are in Victoria as the disaster declaration ahead of Hurricane Francine's landfall. Victoria Fire Chief George Gomez reflects on when he went to New York to help first responders just a week after the 9-11 attacks. Looking firsthand ground zero, uh, my mind could not comprehend what my eyes were seeing, the mass destruction. Uh, talking to the New York firefighters and amidst all that chaos, how firefighters were calling home, leaving voice messages to their loved ones or writing notes to their loved ones and leaving it in lockers in hopes that they would find it. The Victoria Police Chief, the Victoria Mayor and the Victoria County Sheriff also shared remarks during the memorial service. Moments of silence were observed during the playing of the dispatch calls for each tower that was attacked. Well, as the nation marks the 23rd anniversary of the 9-11 terror attacks, thousands of Chicagoans came together to give back to their community. Roughly 2,000 volunteers from 50 organizations gathered at Union Station to prepare meal packs for those in need. It was in honor of the September 11th National Day of Service. Organizers say they want to bring something good to a day known for tragedy. The volunteers were expected to pack more than half a million meals for the Greater Chicago Food De uh, Depository by the end of the day. Well, it was a gorgeous day here in the crossroads today, but so it's kind of hard to believe that there's a tropical or actually now a hurricane just off the coast. Your first warned storm team chief meteorologist Mac Perez joins us now with the latest Mac. Thank you very much. Shana. We've got, of course, beautiful weather as a result of Francine because we are on the backside of it, getting that cool north wind. But Francine slamming into Louisiana just at this very hour. As a matter of fact, you can see how the eye wall moves ashore. Uh, just within the last few minutes, this stormy weather will now be affecting all of southeast Louisiana, including New Orleans. They'll be looking at anywhere from 10 to 15 inches of rain. Winds right now are at 100 miles an hour, so we'll have more on Francine and what our weather is going to be coming up in just a few minutes. Back to you, Sean. All right, well, Hurricane Francine has been strengthening and is on its collision course with Louisiana. Um, again, it's just now making landfall as a Category 2 hurricane near Morgan City, Louisiana. Ivan Rodriguez is in Morgan City with the latest preparations. Conditions are deteriorating on the Louisiana coast. We now know that Francine will remain a Category 1 hurricane, but those dangerous uh, conditions like flooding, storm surge, and wind damage remain unchanged. Flooding rainfall, powerful winds, and potentially life-threatening storm surge. People along the Gulf Coast are preparing for the strength of Hurricane Francine. I got all the vehicles gassed up. We got some extra water. We got the propane bottles filled so we get the gas grill going if we lose power. The last time the state experienced a hurricane was in 2021. Category 4 storm Ida decimated the town of Grand Isle. Over the past week, Hurricane Francine strengthened significantly in the record warm Gulf of Mexico. Storm surge watches and warnings stretch along the coast from northeastern Texas to the Mississippi-Alabama line, with several evacuation orders across Louisiana and the Gulf Coast. People are preparing across the state for prolonged heavy rainfall. 
that's going to push a number of rivers up to and even above flood stage. So that's going to be a problem. Hurricane Francine is expected to drench parts of the lower and middle Mississippi River Valley through the rest of the week, potentially flooding roads, damaging homes, and causing widespread power outages. Some places in southeast Louisiana could see as much as a foot of rain. It is important that people adhere to the warnings that their local officials put out. We're ready for the storm to get here. Hopefully it'll be a minor one and everybody be safe. City officials say in the event that we do see power outages, the power is going to remain out until after the hurricane passes. First responders also won't be on the roads once that threshold is met of the wind passing 35 miles per hour. Landfall here is expected anywhere between 4 and 8 p.m. In Morgan City, Louisiana, I'm Ivan Rodriguez. On the West Coast, apocalyptic looking plumes of smoke filled skies near Los Angeles as firefighters battled three major wildfires that erupted amid a bl blistering heat wave there. Tens of thousands of homes and other structures were threatened and evacuation orders were expanded as the fires grew. Firefighters have been working in steep terrain and temperatures above 100 degrees, but cooler weather was expected for the rest of this week. Wildfires are burning across the West, including in Idaho, Oregon and Nevada. About 20,000 people have had to flee a burning a fire that's burning outside of Reno. Well, a Victoria East High School student has been arrested, accused of making a threat against the school campus. The student allegedly sent a threatening message through social media and an investigation was launched this morning when the school resource officer was made aware of it. Officials say the student uh, was not on campus this morning and was located at a residence. The student was then arrested for terroristic threats and taken to the Victoria County Juvenile Detention Center. A well, separation of church and state up for debate again in Texas public schools. The Texas Education Agency proposed a new public school curriculum that's angering some who say it's infused with religious teachings. Opponents showed up at the State Board of Education's meeting today to testify against it. A biblical studies professor at SMU says the material does not give other religions much attention and could be dangerous for young children. Opponents also say it puts teachers in a difficult place because they're not trained to teach this material. There is a difference between preaching and teaching, and this curriculum is preaching. But others went before the State Board of Education to support the proposal, saying it's constitutional to teach the Bible and that the Supreme Court has ruled in favor of teaching the Bible several times. So until state education leaders make a final decision, this debate will continue on. Well, a 48 year old El Campo man has been arrested on a charge of continuous sexual abuse of a child under the age of 14. Gomesindo Avila Ontiveros is being held in the Wharton County Jail on a $250,000 bond. Well, here are some of the top headlines in the Port Lavaca wave. A new tax rate was adopted by Calhoun County Commissioner's Court. Sheriff Bobby Vickery reminds the county of the golf cart safety and county laws. Um, so you can read these stories and more at portlavacawave.com. Well, if you bought a Mega Millions ticket in Sugarland, you might be a multimillionaire. A single winning Mega Millions ticket was sold at a gas station in Sugarland. The $800 million jackpot is the seventh largest in the lottery's history. If the owner of the ticket takes the cash option, they'll be taking home about $404 million. Well, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Uh, when you're there, hit the like button, click the notification bell, and you'll receive a notification when we upload new content. Well, stay with us straight ahead on 25 News Now at 5. Presidential and vice presidential candidates mark the 9-11 anniversary. Also ahead, women will soon be notified about their breast density after a mammogram as a new FDA rule takes effect.
Former President Donald Trump made a rare appearance in the spin room after his debate with Vice President Kamala Harris last night. He answered reporters' questions for several minutes, calling it his best debate ever and very interesting. Typically, candidates don't go to the spin room themselves. They send surrogates instead. But Trump then headed to Sean Hannity's Fox News show set. Minnesota Governor and Democratic Vice Presidential nominee Tim Walls attended a 9-11 anniversary volunteer event in St. Paul, Minnesota today, marking the 23rd anniversary of the attacks. Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Trump also participated in tributes. At Ground Zero in New York, President Joe Biden and Trump's running mate, Senator J.D. Vance, shook hands before the ceremony. All right, we get to today's viewer poll um, on the political spectrum. Do you think that there should be another debate between uh, the candidates similar to uh, last night? Yes or no? Overwhelmingly, 70% of you say yes, you think that they should face off again in some sort of uh, debate platform. So, uh, but we want to hear from you. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to participate, and we'll have the latest results coming up on 25 News Now at 6. In your health news today, it affects about half of U.S. women who are 40 years old or older, according to the CDC. Having Brent's desk, uh, dense breasts excuse me, simply means that there's more fibrous and granular tissue than fat tissue, but it can put women at a higher risk for breast cancer, and experts say many don't know that. A new rule by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration could help women make in, uh, more informed choices about their breast health. It's the first line of defense against breast cancer. Mammograms can help detect the disease, but they're not foolproof, especially for those who have dense breast tissue. It's pretty much a double whammy in terms of developing or missing a breast cancer, which is why we think it's very important to educate women about the fact that they have dense breast tissue. Dr. Bhavika Patel with Mayo Clinic says cancer in dense breasts can be harder to detect through mammography, and a person with dense breast tissue is at higher risk of developing the disease. We want to find cancers small and early. Starting this week, a new rule by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration is requiring mammography facilities to notify patients about the density of their breasts. So 50% of women will be told that they have dense breast tissue. It is very normal, it's very common. If you get that report, then there will be additional discussions with your provider in regard to potentially getting what we call supplemental imaging, those options include ultrasounds or MRIs to further aid in the detection of breast cancer. Patel says this new rule will make women more aware. Bring up the discussion uh, with your provider and ask questions. Be empowered. Know that you have dense breast tissue and ask them what the different options are. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Dr. Patel says some patients may not live near screening centers and therefore won't have access to or be able to afford certain screening options. So for those people, she recommends having discussions with medical providers about the different options based on where you live and what is offered there. Well, a woman who has been styling hair for 25 years is also making it. After watching her sister fight and ultimately succumb to cancer, Denise Hammond decided to start making wigs. Her philosophy is when you look good, you feel good. And that's why this military veteran started Wigs for Warriors. You don't have to serve to get one of Hammond's wigs, though. In her world, a warrior is any woman who is battling hair loss for any reason. Well, here are some of the top headlines in the Quero record this week. Judicial candidates gather for a meet and greet. We'll actually have more on uh, that coming up on 25 News Now at 10. Plus, city water, sewer, um, they're having urgent repairs done there. So you can read more about these stories and more at DeWittCountyToday.com. Well, good afternoon, everyone. We had a beautiful day here in the crossroads. Nice clouds, nice north wind coming in. Tonight's going to be actually cool. I can say we're getting down to about 70 degrees. Uh, we did manage uh, to get up to 92 today. Of course, that north wind really helped. Uh, that should be our average high, which is 92. Next couple of days, the sunshine will be more widespread, but the uh, cool humidity or the low humidity will make it feel very comfortable. We'll talk about that and take a look at Francine coming up in a moment.
Well, Hurricane Francine is moving on shore in Louisiana. Even as we speak, the eye wall made landfall about an hour ago. It is up to category two, so they've got 100 mile an hour winds now blowing through that area. The closest would be uh, Morgan City um, and then, of course, Huma. And then, of course, after it makes landfall, it's going to be moving onshore uh, up to the New Orleans area. And the metropolitan area is really going to take a big hit. Uh, we can see here on our radar loop, you can see the center of the storm right here. There's the eye, and that moved onshore. And now they're getting the heavy rains. Of course, uh, this is a lot of marshland, and you can just imagine. But once it gets up here to the I-10 corridor, uh, there's a lot of population there that it's going to be uh, affecting. And in the right front quadrant, now that you know the, the lingo, remember the storm's going this way. The right side of the storm is the strong side. That's on shore. The back side of the storm is the weak side. That's why they are getting rain. But over here, we're getting northerly winds and dry weather. Uh, now tonight, uh, of course, all of Louisiana will be affected by this as the storm center keeps moving on shore. It will be uh, tracking through Mississippi. In fact, all of Mississippi will get something from Francine, although it will start uh, to diminish in intensity pretty soon after landfall. But right about now, those of you that are watching, there's your coordinates, uh, 29.3 north and 91.3 west, 100 miles an hour. And now it's also picking up forward speed. So it's now going at about 17 miles an hour, and that's a little bit faster. The faster it goes, the better they are, because the slower it goes, the more rain. And already, uh, I kind of misspoke a little earlier, they're looking at about four to eight inches of rain, not the 10 inches, but that's that's enough. Now there's another area of possible development here and also out in the mid Atlantic. We're watching this system right here and uh, this one just off the coast of Africa. Now they're way far away, but the computer models do pick these up in about 10 to 15 days. That's way far out there. So we're just not going to get too excited about it unless we have, um, you know, pretty good indications that it'll be traveling toward our area at the point at this point. Let's just take it easy. Now, Louisiana, of course, they're getting the brunt of it. We caught the backwash. That's why we had the north wind, the nice, pretty clouds. A few showers will be around that area overnight, but the bulk of the activity will move northward. And you can see how it's going to park itself somewhere over St. Louis, producing quite a bit of rain for the middle Mississippi Valley. And you know what? They're happy. They need it. The Mississippi, of all the rivers in the world, is running very low. Um, and of course, you know, people in West Texas are hoping, hey, what about us? But uh, the Mississippi is going to be getting some good rainfall in uh, the um, uh, mid sections of the of the country right about there. So what about us? Well, here's your forecast for tomorrow. We're looking at partly cloudy, more sunshine than today and getting up to about 92. But not to worry, it's going to be very comfortable with that north wind continuing that uh, dry air through the region. Lots of sunshine inland, northwest winds getting up to about 92. Next few days are really going to be spectacular. To be in September this early and to already feel like fall, well, it's good. Look at that, 93. And then as we start Monday, Tuesday, just a few garden variety showers possible uh, popped by afternoon heating. That is your seven day forecast. We'll remind you that we do have a QR code. Love for you to scan that. Put Crossroads today on your phone. Here's Shana. All right, Mac, I'm not sure if you can get any sunnier than today was, but <laughs> you know, if we can, we'll, we'll take it. Well, coming up next on 25 News Now at 5, we'll take a look at your stocks. Plus, we'll also look at other numbers that are reflecting the health of the economy.
A positive day for stocks today. The Dow closed up 125 points, the S&P 500 up 59 points, and the Nasdaq closed up 370 points. Oil is up $1.63 a barrel, closing at uh, $67.31 per barrel. In August, the consumer price index rose to 0.2%, while annual inflation dropped to 2.5%, its lowest in three years. This trend is suggesting that the Federal Reserve might cut interest rates by about a quarter of a percent next week. However, core CPI, which excludes food and energy, increased 0.3%, indicating ongoing inflation concerns. Housing costs were up by half a percent. Food prices rose by 0.1%, though energy costs fell by 0.8%. Uh, Millions of people have a four-legged reason to mark this September. It is National Pet Insurance Month. Emily Schmidt reports on the price of peace of mind when it comes to paying for your pet's health. There are plenty of times life with a pet is priceless until that priceless moment carries a cost. Pet surgeries and pet veterinary costs can be really, really expensive. Lending Tree Chief Credit Analyst Matt Schultz says what heals your pet can harm your budget. One option to hedge your bets, pet insurance. A major industry group reports that 6.25 million pets were insured in North America in 2023, nearly a million more than the year before. The average premium for accident and illness insurance for a dog was around $675 in 2023 and around $383 for a cat. Accident-only insurance is cheaper but doesn't cover illnesses like cancer, infections, or digestive issues. All pet insurances are definitely not created equal, and it's absolutely worth your time to take the effort to shop around. Another challenge, keeping your pets insured. In June, Nationwide Pet, the largest provider of its kind in the country, said it would drop about 100,000 policies by next summer to keep up with the rising vet care costs. It makes it a really difficult decision for folks as to how to spend that money and what to do in place of that insurance. Schultz says inflation means it's more important than ever to look down the road and anticipate what could go wrong because unconditional love can end up being pretty pricey when it comes to our pets. For Consumer Watch, I'm Emily Schmidt. Campbell's Soup is planning to rebrand as the Campbell's Company in order to reflect its expanded product range beyond just soup. With soup now a smaller portion of the sales, the company, which owns uh, brands like Goldfish and Pepperidge Farm, wants a name that better represents its diverse offerings. Shareholders will vote on the name change at the annual meeting in November. Well, stay with us. We'll take one last look at your forecast when we come back. Plus, a bear makes a splash as it beats the heat in style. And here's a look at what's coming up on World News Tonight, right after 25 News Now at 5. Tonight, with the historic debate done and just weeks before Election Day, what do voters think now? Who came out ahead? Plus, tracking the new powerful storm, Francine. World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast.
Well, this bear is clearly living its best life, escaping <laughs> the heat to cool off in a Southern California family's <laughs> backyard wading pool. He's just like, hey. Yeah, he looks just, comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> a California man shared video of a large black bear beating the late summer heat by wow. taking a dip in a kiddie pool. You can see the large bear just luxuriating in the small pool. Temperatures have climbed into the triple digits in that area. So, you know, I don't blame him. Yeah. But they they have lovingly named this bear Snaggle. He has a canine tooth hanging out of the left side of its mouth. So that's, you know, that's where he got his name. The bear is a frequent visitor to the area, oh. as well as the kiddie pool. Oh. Had, uh, and so it had been filled with water in case, uh, you know, he needed to come for a drink. Obviously, he... Uh, well, it's nice that they took care and left him some water, but he decided yeah. to just uh, probably waiting. Them. Hey, can I have the remote control, please? He needs a little floaty and, <laughs> you know. and, yes. and, and you're absolutely right. The huge heat wave out there. But for them, there's good news. There's a big winter storm coming in, going to drop that. But tonight, uh, you know, think about your friends in Louisiana as uh, the storm Francine as a category two is moving inshore even as we speak. We, of course, are blessed by north winds giving us some very nice weather for the next few days. Tomorrow we'll see a lot more sunshine, uh, even though we had sunny today. Uh, but we are looking at uh, the north winds to end. And by the time we get to the southeast winds next week, we'll pick up a few little garden variety showers. Nothing to get worried about. All right, looks like a good forecast. Well, thanks for being with us. We hope to see you back here at 6.